Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Grayscale Gorilla Podcast. Thank you for joining us. My name is Nick Campbell, and the special guest today, always special guest, Chris Schmidt from Grayscale Gorilla. Say hi. Hello, hello. We have uh, uh, Chad Ashley over there in Chicago as well. Say hi, Chad. Hey, guys. And uh, Chad's got a special guest with him today. Can you a uh, very introduce... special guest? Yeah, an, an actual special guest. He's actually <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you introduce uh, our audience to uh, who's over on your side of the screen? Yeah, today? this is uh, this is my pal Trevor uh, from CareMotionDesign.com, right? Is yeah. that right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Trevor is in town, kind of just uh, checking out the, the different studios, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, I figured he was coming over for lunch and seeing how our podcast kind of gets started later <laughs> seems later like every week and later <laughs> um that you know originally i was like oh you'll probably get here right when we wrap and then um it just so happened that he was getting here as we started so now you're our special guest Woo! so you should be you're actually our very first in-person special mm -hmm. guest you know so you should feel good about that it's first guest the way all. trendsetter I yeah guess. so um <laughs> it's just a little bit of a, a, st a story on trevor here trevor and i met at NAB, right? Mm -hmm. Was it NAB? I think so. NAB yeah. last year. Mm -hmm. And um, we kind of both nerded out over Star Wars and Arnold and rendering and all that stuff. And then, um, so then Trevor and I basically shared, hang, you know, Google Hangouts information. And he's one of the people that I talk to probably every day now. Mm -hmm. He's like, one of, you know, you have that circle of people that mm -hmm. you talk to every day. Uh, via Hangouts or iChat or whatever. And so you're one of those people. So you should feel pretty privileged about that. <laughs> Maybe you should feel privileged. I like your style. See, that's why you're, that's why you're on. That's why you're one of my top my top people. Okay. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and, and what were you doing at NAB when we met? Oh, okay. I mean, I'm not sure how in-depth you want me to get. Yeah, but the, uh, the, get the, the Cliff Notes. All right, Cliff Notes version. Um I've been freelance for two years, I think now, since December 2014. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been using Cinema 40 for four years now, five years, I think five years now, mm -hmm. four years, four or five years. Um, anyway, so at, at uh, my whole, the whole way I got uh, into NAB was, um, you know, I've been going a, a bunch, like a bunch of the previous NABs and... Um, like going as a spectator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I should have clarified that. No, right. And uh, basically, I just spoke with Matthias, and he reached out and said, hey, man, we like your work. Um, you know, come out to NAB and talk about it. That's so, uh, I mean, since then, I've just been freelancing for, you know, uh, uh, DJs, music artists, uh, other studios. I'm right. really trying right. to kind of push more in the film direction um, now yeah. with my career. But, you know, it's been a fun ride so far. <laughs> yeah. So Trevor was actually, you guys remember at, uh, was it a NAB that you were doing the Star Wars thing or was that SIGGRAPH? Uh, no, I did Star Wars at SIGGRAPH. Okay. So NAB, I don't remember what you were showing at NAB, but at SIGGRAPH, you might, you, where you probably know this guy from is he's the guy that like basically did that giant Star Wars short by himself, like crazily. <laughs> um, with like a ridiculous amount of geo and stuff. And mm -hmm. he talked about it at Seagraph and, um, and a lot of different Arnold, uh, discussions and talked at the Autodesk Arnold event, right? At the, uh, yeah. where they um, were... I, w I spoke at the, uh, vision series for Autodesk. Right. And that was you up there with Marcos, the guy that invented mm -hmm. Arnold, mm -hmm. talking to a bunch of Autodesk people about how it's integrated into Cinema 4D. Yeah. Um, there were actually quite a number of C4D artists at the right. um, Autodesk event. At the beginning, I asked, like, you know, who all was there that knew Cinema 4D, and, like, half the audience raised their hands, and I was like, woo. That's cool. <laughs> Represent. That's that's actually <laughs> really pretty rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, you've, you've come in at an interesting time in the podcast where we're talking a lot about... Um, renderers and and hardware too i guess i guess i have a couple questions for you uh, yeah based sure, on i mean a couple, i'm here <laughs> yeah a couple uh, episodes ago we got a lot into what hardware everyone's running and this whole transition to uh windows a lot of people are talking about so um uh what's your, what's your gear what's your setup what you, what do you run on these days yeah so um it's uh sort sort of a ongoing conversation um but basically i mean i started off with um you know the the uh 
what was it? The Mac Probe right before it went into the tube. The cheese grater. That's yes. how, uh, how I refer <laughs> yeah, to it. Sure, the, the cheese the grater. Silver. So I started off with that when I when I you know went on my own. That was that was my first purchase, and uh, I at the time uh, was only familiar with you know C4D's render engine. Um, and so I heard, you know, a lot of talk about different render engines. And at the time I decided that I wanted to try Octane out. And at that point, you know, you can, um, hook up, uh, some graphics cards to those, those machines. Um, but I really wanted to, you know, build something out so that I could, I mean, just similar to what you have down here, um, you know, make the full commitment to going GPU rendering and seeing what that was all about. Anyway, so my first iteration was, um, a, a PC, um, because, you know, you just have a lot more control over what you're doing with your box, right. um, overall. And, uh, you know, as your flavors and tastes and the tools you need to use change, um, you know, you can kind of on the fly work on that and, and, you know, be constantly iterating anyway. Um, so, uh, it's basically a, uh, I run windows seven um, and I have two Xeon, uh, 2687s. Um, those are the How 10 cores? cores, uh, ten, ten, cores? 10 cores each. So when you dual thread those, mm -hmm. those are, or hyper thread those, those, those are 20 buckets basically. Yeah. Uh, yes. Or no, sorry. More than that. Uh, 40, 40. Yeah. yeah. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bucket some, some, uh, some serious buckets. 40 for CPU. Um, that was later. Uh, that actually happened later, though. So my my very first rig was just a twenty six eighty seven Xeon, one, a singular, um, with uh, three nine eighties of. Uh, I don't think they were TI. I think they were just nine eighties. So three GeForce nine eighty yeah, Nvidia yep. cards. Okay. Um, but now uh, I have uh, two Titans and a Quadro K six thousand. I had purchased the K six thousand actually only because at the time I was rendering a really big job and needed more. RAM than my 980s had, VRAM. Mm, yeah. And at the time, the only card with 12 gig of VRAM was the K6000. That's weird. <laughs> and so then, like, that's a Kepler card, right? Yeah, it is. Um, and actually, at the time in Octane, uh, Kepler was running more efficiently than Pascal was, um, which eventually changed. But anyway, so my current build is uh, the two Titans, a um, K6000, and the two. Uh, Xeons. And you built this yourself? I built it myself and it's all like water cooled and everything. Okay. okay. And the transition for you, uh, t t you know, give me, give me a hug here a little bit. How yeah. Is, how's so, it going to go? I mean, I, I listened to that podcast actually and, and uh, wanted to ask questions to the screen and just interact. But so now I get to. <laughs> here he is. Um, so anyway, uh, for me, it was, um, you know, the first few days are just kind of I don't want to say rough. It's just different. It's just, um, you know, you got a couple different keys. You got a, like muscle memory and, um, you know, to me that was probably the, that and networking, I think, you know, right. Yeah. Um, that's quite I have a, a couple, bit different. I have a couple nodes also. So networking was a pretty big thing. Um, a major thing I've noticed, and I don't know if this is getting like too techy or not, but, uh, setting up things like environment variables, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of, you know, licensed servers will call things like that. Um, it's really super easy to do uh, in Windows, and it's not actually even possible in OS X anymore. Hmm. So, really? Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, there you go. There's something I didn't even. I, yeah. I didn't so, know that. Um, uh, I mean, the overall transition was not so bad uh, if, because I had shaped, you know, kind of how what my expectations were going to be going in. I know it's not going to, you know, it's not everything is going to be nicely. Um, anti-aliased and things like that. <laughs> yeah, you have to get you over know, that. like uh, if you, it's kind of like. Here's a good example. Especially in Windows Seven. Windows Seven looks like crap compared yeah, to Windows Ten. It does. Um, but I think the best analogy that you can come up with for it is the same way that I treat um, like uh, um, non-meat uh, products, like uh, you know, like Boca burgers and stuff like that. Okay. That are like uh, vegetarian food. So if you go into it knowing that it's not going to taste like meat, it can oh, actually taste saying. pretty good. Okay, so. <laughs> so if you go into it knowing it's not going to be OS X, it's actually really... Um, it's lower you know, my expectations. Yeah. Got it. Well, 
it's not lowering it's just changing <laughs> if you alter it, changing you alter the downwards. expectations i think mm -hmm. is a good term yeah because it's never gonna look or feel or right. be right os x that's correct and as for me who i barely use OS X. I think mm -hmm. I, you know, in the other podcasts I mentioned, I have like, uh, we have a Mac mini downstairs. I didn't never hardly use it. And then a long time ago I used a Mac, but I mean, I will say that, you know, once you get over some of these humps and for me, I think for you, the biggest hump will probably be ease of use and the look and feel. Um, it's different and mm -hmm. it's, I would say that it's much easier to go to windows 10 than it is to go to windows seven from a Mac. Okay. Because it's way cleaner. It's a it's a lot more minimal, mm -hmm. more like what you're used to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Chris, you've been going through this process. Do you have any uh, any updates for Mac to Windows world? Um, I don't think I can really add anything terribly useful because I haven't started doing any work off that laptop. I pretty much just use it for these streams and playing video games. <laughs> So, and for what that, it's been great. Money well, what game, <laughs> what game are you playing? I think uh, people might want to know. Uh, lots of Overwatch and lots of Minecraft. Hey, Overwatch. Minecraft is dangerous, and Overwatch is super fun. Oh, gosh, I have so many Minecraft questions. Oh, uh, <laughs> Minecraft is so much fun. Uh, it just sucks up way too much of my time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I totally forgot about the brand, the first part of the podcast, which is usually news. Oh yeah, <laughs> but we we got straight into talking with Trevor, oh, yeah. which uh, which I don't regret at all. But I did want to catch people up because there is a lot going on uh, on the website over the next uh, month. Uh, it looks pretty big. Um, I wanted to uh, do something we almost never do, uh, it, which is pre-announce a sale. And uh, we're having uh, two sales in the next about week or so. Let's see, over the next two weeks. Uh, and I wanted everyone to know about it. We do this because we want people to um, basically get ready for the sale. Uh, we, we don't want to spring it on you. We used to kind of say, like, everything's on sale today only. And then people would write back and go, but I need to ask my boss and get my credit card ready and save my pennies and all that stuff. And so um, we're, we're, we're trying to do it right for you guys this time and announce uh, two sales over the next couple of weeks that I want you guys to get ready for. If you're interested in getting X particles, adding X particles to your workflow, which by the way, I have some Arnold X particles questions yeah, man. that I'll, I'm going to ask you. Let's talk. I, re <laughs> I recently found out that X particles works like seamlessly with, with uh, Arnold. Um, so much so that you don't, it doesn't even have to render the, the, the geometry inside of the viewport. It just does it automatically in Arnold. Um, and it's kind of hard to describe that right now, but basically you get millions of particles instantly rendering with all the sexy Arnold shaders. So um, look for a tutorial about that soon because I've I've been having a ball with that. But uh, if you guys are looking at X particles with or without Arnold, uh, we're gonna have a hundred dollars off X particle sale um, uh, in the next couple weeks. So stay tuned. I'm gonna have a more solid date for you guys very soon. But uh, start saving for that if uh, if you guys are interested. Um, and uh, we're also going to throw some extra bonuses in there as well. So keep an eye out for that. And then our big announcement is 40% off everything Grayscale Gorilla. And that is within the next couple weeks as well. So we're, we're going to tie down those dates. Dude, thank you. 40% off. Uh, now's the time, folks. Uh, if you have been looking at one of our products, especially something new like Top Coat um, or our. Uh, HDRI studio rig that a ton of ton of people have been using recently in their workflow. Um, and I wanted to also say that it also includes our training as well. So if you've looked at our training uh, site, saw something there you you know were looking at, might have got, um, we're gonna have it all on sale for one day only. And that's gonna be, uh, uh, both of them are gonna be after Thanksgiving, uh, but before Christmas, well, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll give you those dates. That's a good range. <laughs> that's a good range. But that's, safe, um, that's a safe range. Yeah, it's safe. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna lock those down and announce it a little bit more publicly. But for those of you listening to the um, podcast, I wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up because we know a lot of you guys are, at the end of the year are you know saving up some money for some of these big sales coming up, and uh, I wanted you to. To save a couple extra bucks for Grayscale Gorilla stuff and X Particles, if uh, if if you've been looking at our products, training uh, or X Particles, so um, that's that's the main announcements. We have some tutorials coming up this week uh, on the site. Uh, Chris has another Ask GSG this Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Time on t our Twitch channel. 
Mm -hmm. uh, which is C40 Live. You can go check that out there. Uh, we will be, uh, everything will be open as far as the store and everything, but we'll be out uh, on a uh, Thanksgiving holiday toward the end of this week and uh, and then planning for the sales as soon as we get back. So um, that was all the Grayscale Gorilla announcements, um, other than a very extra special guest here on the Grayscale Gorilla podcast, uh, which I'm going to ask you a question right now, Trevor. Yeah, go um, for it, man. So I know I can render. So what's really cool about the Arnold X Particles thing is you could go into the Arnold tag. You, you basically add that Arnold tag to your X Particles emitters. Uh, so the first question is, is what else can I add that Arnold tag to? I found that emitters work and I found that um, tra trails work. Okay. Uh, any, yeah. Anything um, else I should be experimenting with? Because I got with, some daily renders to, to the take, uh, to, to Arnold make. parameters tag. You mean? Yes, yes. Exactly. Okay. So the Arnold parameters tag can go on any scene object in Cinema 4D, uh, and basically what it does is it, it exposes the um, the controls that are uh, being translated into Arnold. So like it's basically exposing the the nodes. Um, in like Arnold standalone uh, to you in Cinema 4D. So for example, if you like have a camera, you can put Arnold parameters tag on it and it'll expose all the camera options available in Arnold. So it's literally like one tag fits all objects. Okay, that because that was a really amazing because you could put that tag on anything. And, mm -hmm. But what's what's almost confusing in a, in a way is, is it's different for every object. But now that you described it that way, it makes sense. So right. you could so, put it on an emitter and then you could choose things like spheres and triangles mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. You could put it on a tracer and it seems to just show up and it'll give you thickness options and all that cool stuff right. as well. So, so what, what that's doing is um, rendering uh, what are called Arnold curves. That'll work with any splines um, in Cinema 4D. Wow. Um, and so you can you know use a standard shader on that or you can use a hair shader on that as well, actually. Um, and that's all being loaded um, generated at render time. So instead of having to like sweep all of your objects, um, you know, you can just throw that tag on it and it'll build that object out perfectly smooth um, at render time. And, you know, you can have your viewport playing back just your really lightweight splines like in real time. Yeah, um, that, that was the amazing incredible. part was watching all the real time feedback in the viewport with no geometry in it. Mm -hmm. And then hitting render and seeing the geo pop up. So that was, now, that was that's a cool way of working. Um, anything else I, I can experiment with with that tag yeah. and X particles in particular? Absolutely. Um, so well, with X particles and shaders. So uh, you can um, in the tag uh, when you put it on an X particle emitter, um, it gives you uh, options. I think it's like it's the export tab. I think there's an export tab. Yeah. And it will allow you to export all of the variables that um, X particles carries. So like ID, speed, um, yeah, exactly, um, age, things like that. You can export into um, Arnold essentially, which basically just means you can put a shader on it and pull any one of those um, features into anything that you can plug into in the Arnold shader network, which is everything right so like subsurface uh diffuse uh spec you know um you can id everything so let's mm -hmm. say you wanted to have i don't know like a bunch of let's say you put i don't know lemons on um the the uh x particle right like so you use arnold the arnold parameters tag to load mm -hmm. in like you were saying in that custom shape um so a you'd lemon. Have like a, a, a particle system right. of lemons. Right, a particle system of lemons. And you want to change the hue. Yeah, you, you know where I'm going. I know this. where you're going, but I want <laughs> so, to So, okay. So, you want, if you want to, you know, let's say uh, shade all your lemons very slightly differently, um, you know, you can take those IDs, uh, pull that ID in just with one node um, called the X particles node, and pipe that into like a hue, for example, or a uh, saturation, and get you know, uh, basically varying those variables for every single instance mm -hmm. just for free. Um, wow. So, you know, you get like all kinds of variation. You can do crazy colors. You can, um, you know, pipe that information into a ramp, which can be driving image shaders. It can be driving just color. Um, it can drive like anything. Um, so, yeah, the, the exposure that they've kind of built in is pretty robust. You yeah. Know? Like oh, yeah. It's, it's And a lot of people, you know, are talking about, um, and I know probably a lot of our listeners right now are probably like, well, cycles, you know, that's mm -hmm. the, 
the newest thing that mm-hmm. integrates with um, right. with with X particles. What do you think? Have you tried that? Have you played with? I that? honestly have. I've been crazy busy lately, so I haven't. I mean, I watched a little bit of uh, Casey's um, stream. Oh, the live the stream. other day. What's that? The live stream. Yes, uh, just uh, a little bit while I was uh, actually working on another project, um, but. Uh, you know, uh, people seem to be excited about its integration. Um, I would expect it's at least what Arnold is able to do, but I don't. I don't. Yeah, that's know what I was kind of curious it. about. Like, is there any integration that they have that is not in Arnold available in Arnold? Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's an interesting. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out when well, we're we'll going to get a couple Casey. copies at GSG. And we we'll have to get Casey Hupke on the stream then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so um, speaking of like you know, Arnold and, mm-hmm. and all the things that, you know, about the integration with X particles, mm-hmm. how much of what you do on a daily basis is, is kind of those two tools working together? Like, do you do a lot of that? Well, uh, so lately I've been doing a lot of personal environment projects and, um, using X particles, you can generate like trillions of polygons for almost free in Arnold. Like actually on my, uh, if you go to my website, um, curmotion, design.com slash talks mm-hmm. um are my uh SIGGRAPH presentations and it actually goes like right. further into depth about that but um so yeah i mean basically what i've been doing is using um x particles to like scatter foliage you know trees grass all these kind of other things based on things like vertex maps or textures mm-hmm. um you know you can use cinema 4d textures yep. to um tell x particles where to go on geometry so if i like have a mountain and then paint on it like where I want the trees to go with vertex map with vertex map or a shader. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Then uh, you know it'll it'll only scatter where those uh, maps are, mm-hmm. and then you load in trees which can be you know as high density as you want them to be. Usually for me they've been about three to four million polygons. So that means per like tree. per tree, um, and then that's loaded in at render time, and then I can use X particle IDs to you know shift the colors of the trees slightly. Mm-hmm. Uh, for every tree and it's all it only costs me the memory of one tree is there any other particle <clears throat> system that you guys can think of that i mean is x particles is kind of the system right yes i mean to me it is uh there's you know you have espresso and you have the also the standard thinking, um, thinking particles yeah yeah do you guys we, ever use you guys ever use that or do you always just do x particles chris remember I mean, the I mean, remember the video we made with the with the uh, thinking particles. Yeah, we, we were trying to do a live stream video of thinking particles to do this basic thing because I, I I know or at least knew thinking particles really well, and it was getting like so obtuse, and we were ha- connecting so many things to try and make the most basic things happen, and then we just that was one where we gave up. It was like this isn't working. We gotta stop. It's not working. Sorry. Yeah, I think it was just like an emitter too. You're like, well, we, we gotta get this emitting somehow. And it took like four different <laughs> nodes. Yeah. And uh, and then we 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 both gave up and. Switch to X particles are like okay emitter. How does this work? Click emitter. And we didn't know X particles <laughs> at the time, right? We're like learning it as we go, and it just all we're like, what now? I don't know. I think we added turbulence. Oh my gosh, yeah. it just worked. Oh, what now? turbulence. Yeah, what? you just added X-ray's trail. Pretty well, integrated. I think you know TP is like I come from 3ds Max, mm-hmm. and like thinking particles in 3ds Max is made by Cebus, and it's like a whole VFX. It's built a lot of a lot of VFX pipelines are built on on that tool in Max. But is that not the same thinking particles that's in No, Cinema? no, no, it is. Well, here's the thing. I think back in ver- Cinema 4D version 8, if, I, if I'm recalling correctly, Maxon bought like the code to thinking particles as it existed at that time. It wasn't the integration. They bought the code. And then based on them owning that code, they also developed Expresso. But as thinking particles went and continued evolving, the uh, Maxon and, and the Cinema 4D version of it didn't evolve along with it. So we just have the version from like 2003, maybe 2002. <laughs> so they just literally <laughs> snapshotted yeah, it's a snapshot time of thinking in particles that product's development from and 2002. Then just said, this is what you're going to get forever. <laughs> and that's it. And that's what we got. Well, but so that means, though, Chris, when you were learning back then, that it was kind of like a pretty robust system right? oh it was so amazing like- it was the first time you could like like it was the first time particles could like interact with geometry in any kind of way because before that you just had the old particle system and you could just make a flat 
like polygon deflector, and that's all you had. So if you wanted to bounce off a sphere, you had to make like and there's no cloners. Keep in mind, you had to make like a series of arrays <laughs> around the sphere to make particles bounce off of a sphere. <laughs> and then there's thingy particles. Is like oh, just connect the emitter to the particle node, output the particle node to a deflector, and now tell the geometry, and it would just just work. But I yeah. would love to see X particles do like a node. A node tree based work. Yeah, I feel like that'd it, be incredible. Because I, I really X particles is so intuitive and like pretty easy to mm-hmm. pick up and like make a pretty basic system. But what it's really lacking, I think, is that next level of control. Mm-hmm. What do you? What have you run into? Yeah, um, I mean, I would agree on that. Actually, uh, it's nice having the hierarchy, mm-hmm. um, and that's you know really intuitive, especially for like when you're just starting out with it and you don't really kind of know it's going on i mean like you know nick and chris said they just walked in and had no idea what they were doing and immediately started Mm -hmm. working in it um but i think to get uh to to be able to see it in a node network would be really strong because then you know you can see the interconnecting relationships yeah um also you know uh assign things a lot more intelligently right yeah um, well, I think that's that, the, one the question the, answer yeah. system right now is a little obtuse yeah yeah that's the testing that i really think it needs it for like you said because it one thing's coming from max and pflow and even xsi and ice it's like it's got a really robust uh testing thing where you can say you know if particle uh enters this volume then execute this and like that type of control is like you need that on jobs like i can't it, yeah. It's really hard to not have that, I think. It, it, you can kind of do that now, um, but, you know, being able to see the flow As, of yeah. the line going, um, you know, a, a, ant, uh, asking the question and giving you the two answers is a lot more straightforward to look at in a linear fashion than mm-hmm. it is to, like, kind of look through a hierarchy. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're handing the scene off to somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're hand, you're like, you do a system and you like send it off to the next artist or maybe you pick it up even two years later and you can't remember what the hell right. you did. Yep. And like, that's really what it comes Or even a couple to. weeks later. Yeah, right. But, you guys yeah. are making me want to go play with X-Particles. Okay. I know, like, yeah. I feel like, um, you know, that's something, that's one of my goals like for 2017 is to really like dive in more to X-Particles mm-hmm. and really mm-hmm. learn it better because I feel like it's such a powerful tool that I've only scratched the surface on. Yeah, it's definitely super powerful. Um, and a lot of the C4D shaders work with it, well, can work with it too, which mm. is uh, really cool. Yeah. Like, uh, by that I mean for, you know, emission, um, for, yeah, for like if you want to just for scatter. Yeah, so there's actually, um, Mario uh, turned me on to using the um, the terrain shader do you guys are you guys familiar oh, with the terrain, geez, shader? the terrain shader that's one of the oldest things yeah so the terrain shader you know you can evaluate slope all oh, right yeah so, so you can do that you can but you have to um bake it oh well, so there's that caveat that's lame but but you know it works yeah <laughs> so does so does painting a map though at that that's point. true at that point but it's intriguing mm-hmm. all right i gotta hmm. go figure I, you know what it, this is I could ask, how, uh, how, if I want the high quality density lemon in in Arnold style rendered, what what node do I hook that up to? Do I just make that an emitter, or do I hook that into the the emitter geometry, or is it a separate way? Of so working? you take your emitter, yep. You place the Arnold parameters tag on it. Got it. You spin down the drop down for shape, I think it is, yeah. and you select custom shape. Oh, you could probably pull it up. Oh, I'm an idiot. Um, I got so excited with sphere, so I didn't go any further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh, you, you know. Um, uh, and then all you're gonna do is a dialog opens up where you can drag a, 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 an object in. Yep. Oh, and then, yeah. And then it, it's gonna load. And the interesting thing is, you know, you have, um, you still can. Uh, it's not really radius, but you know, like the the scale. You can still on the at the Arnold level um, tell Arnold to read it at a, a greater or smaller scale without having to go reload um, mm. your you know <clears throat> setting it on the particle level, reload it, and then uh, see your right. result. You can actually just scale it straight in Arnold, like mm. in real time. Like, if, can you also do it via X particles radius? Then yes, you, you can do it, it. Uh, but then you have to you know re-emit the particle. Oh, interesting. Oh. So it's not, you have to like basically refresh it. Yeah. X particles needs the refresh. The Arnold tag is live. 
Interesting. Mm-hmm. So that's actually a smarter way to do it. Only difference is now. Here's a question: mm-hmm. If I, if I'm in X particles and I have I'm emitting you know lemons, <laughs> and I change the size, but I have a variation in my size of lemons because uh-huh. not every lemon is the same size, right? So right. I have that built up in my X particle mm-hmm. system. And then I want to change the global size yep. using the Arnold right. uh, sh- shape. Is it still going to respect the variation that mm-hmm. I put into it? Yeah, it's 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 just a multiplier for whatever the particle whatever scale it reads is. it as. Yeah. The particle scale will then be multiplied. Okay. Correct. Cool. Um, and another thing you can do actually is uh, once if you start using really dense objects like you know a couple million uh, polygons each, if you have like uh, you know let's say five. Uh, models and they're all you know five million polygons each when you press save it's going to take you you know like 30 or 40 seconds to save that project and it's going to be like a gig or gig and a half right in file size Mm -hmm. um what you can do is you can save save each of those out to an arnold scene source file um okay and then load that okay so take what take what (laughs) we just down yeah simple take what we just talked about but instead of dragging the object in you're going to drag in an object that's loading a file. Oh, the, so, the ass file. Yeah, the ass file. You can say oh, it. Oh, there you go, the ass file. talking about the so, ass file. So essentially, uh, you're... He didn't want to say it. I, was I wasn't sure what the what the rating... <laughs> hey, we didn't name it. I mean, keep it PG-13. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, I forgot where I was. So you're talking about being able to essentially oh, not yeah, have yeah. a giant scene file so, by using the they ass They sound file. like X-refs. Yeah, yeah, um, it is, but it's done with a uh, basically a text document. The AS file is literally a text document that you can open up and read and like change things in if you wanted to. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, so uh, get crazy. it's yeah if you want to. Uh, I, I'm not like a super code guy or anything, but like I've gone in and changed the variables in there before instead of like re-exporting another file, mm. stuff like that. Okay. Like you can do a quick Control F find. I don't know, like roughness, and then you see the value, and you just change it oh, in that's the file. Cool. That reminds me, long, long time ago. That's how I don't remember if it was Maya or something. Everything had this SDL, this scene description. I think maybe language was the L, but yeah, you could mm-hmm. do that. Like yeah. you could essentially like open up a text document and change settings, yeah. and it was like magic. So it's all being contained outside of your C4D file, which means your file is going to be fast. Your viewport's going to be fast. If you want to see um, what you're looking at instead of, uh, you know, when you pull an ass file in, um, <laughs> that's never going to get it, old. No. And I was just using kick the other day. So I'm typing oh, out kick, ass. uh, yeah. So uh, I was using the, the Cornell, uh, bunny. So it was like kick Cornell ass and it's, I don't know, dot ass. So <laughs> it's just a lot of giggling going on. Yeah, there was just like, um, in the privacy of my home. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, they're all staying outside your C4D scene and they come in in basically like a bounding box. That's how it defaults when it comes in. Um, so your lemon would look like a cube. Um, and then if you wanted to see the lemon, you can actually you know flip through its display type. You can look at it as a point cloud point on, yeah. or you can look at it actually as the full geometry. And that shows whatever. up in the IPR too. Like you don't need to like really. Oh you yeah, don't you don't to... have to do that. Um, like your your you, you know the viewport, you don't want to bog down too much. So I always keep that as bounding boxes, and then mm-hmm. you know just adjust Me things too. in the in the IPR. Um, because yeah, that's, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, because you can. I mean, I have actually in that SIGGRAPH presentation, I have. On uh, on Paul Babb's laptop, I was using for the um, oh, yeah, presentation. Oh that. That's a funny yeah. story. Um, and uh, you know, I had 1.2 trillion polygons, and I was just like flying around the scene, um, yeah. live on the screen. Can I tell that story? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So this is a funny. You guys want to hear the story about that? Yeah, how that came it. to be. Um, now tell me, you just stop me if I get it wrong, okay. but like the idea was that, you know, Trevor was going to show up at the Autodesk booth at Seagraph uh, to demonstrate all the crazy polygon counts he's been getting with Arnold and, uh, and with Cinema 4D. And so he was constantly trying to get a hold of the Autodesk people to find out like, what kind of machine am I going to be on? Is it going to be able to, you know, load these files? Is everything? And they're kind of giving him the bit of the brush off. 
Um, and then he he shows up there, and, and you know, you think Autodesk, you think gigantic corporation with Maya, Max, and Media and Entertainment Group, all the stuff, and you think they're going to have like a really robust machine for him to do his demo on, but it turns out, what did they have? They had like a oh, it was, it was um, a terrible machine. Yeah, it was like one of the a, a re- older HP. One of those HP boxes. I don't remember. Yeah, they had some was. really, really horrible like, HP no machine. No SD drives and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, not I mean, even... I don't mean to... Not, no solid... How do you not have a solid state drive on a demo machine <laughs> when you're Autodesk? That just blows my mind. Anyway, so I remember you were at, you're asking around, like, mm-hmm. does anybody have a laptop that I could take to... Because I don't know what they're going to have. Yep. And this is... I mean, we're just going to talk about how awesome Paul Babb is, mm-hmm. as, as if you don't already know. Um, Max on USA, Paul Babb, uh, CEO, he's like, use mine. And you know, how, this, how weird is that? Like, think about that for a second. Paul Babb, CEO of Max on USA, giving his laptop to a guy that's going to go demo with it at an Autodesk show <laughs> in front of all Autodesk people. Like that's, I, I mean, that's just crazy. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it worked. That's why Flawlessly, Paul's a man. yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. I mean, like, it wasn't. And what kind of a laptop was it? Just for those who uh, care. I think it was. Oh, jeez. I think it was um, one of those uh, pre- Predator. They had bought it was it last an Asus. Year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was, was an one Asus. Of those. It was like like mid level um, gaming laptop, basically. Okay. I think yeah, I think I remember that one actually. Um, I think they said they had gotten them last year. So twenty fifteen. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know. Paul Babb, I mean, that's pretty dope. Yeah. And uh, that's not to say, like, I mean, the Autodesk people were really nice and they were great. Oh, yeah. D- I'm not trying to. No, dis- no, no. I know. I, I get it. Um, <laughs> I see what but, you're doing. you know, there, it, it is a. I'm just it saying. A big, it, is a, it is a big, um, you know, corporate structure. And right. um, Paul Babb's an awesome dude. He really is. So that's, I think that's really what I it think all you summed it up to. right there. Yeah, and and that was that was pretty that's pretty key right there. He's a yeah. he's a guy mm-hmm. that will be glad to help you out. Yes, absolutely. Well, I think as we uh, wrap up here, we get on on about an hour. Um, I thought we could do something we do on some episodes, which is c- just kind of talk about something that we're into, something we discovered over the last couple of weeks that maybe cinema related, maybe three D, maybe art, maybe music, anything, um, anything anyone's into that you think maybe our audience might dig. Um, and, uh, and maybe we try something else new and Trevor, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Oh, uh, okay. we're going to ask our audience a question. We, um, you know, we get a lot of people that watch this on YouTube and also on iTunes and, um, which by the way, as I mentioned that, All if right. you want to see today's, um, uh, show notes, which we have all the links to all this stuff, um, including uh, Paul Babb for president. We'll make we'll put that one in there. Um, uh, please head on over to iTunes and also on YouTube. Um, we we put all these show notes out there, including everything we're about to talk about. Um, and please uh, subscribe if you're uh, listening to us on iTunes or through uh, Overcast or some podcast app. We'd love to uh, get you as a subscriber and also as a um, uh, to get a review, if you can, that'd be that would be super helpful for us. But um, Trevor, I'm going to have you ask our audience a question that they can respond over on YouTube, and uh, maybe it's just some sort of data collection about something you're into, um, and and see kind of ping our audience and see what the heck they're doing. So I'll I'll have you think about that, okay. and think <laughs> about something cool that you've been into recently, and um, maybe uh, Chris, do you have something you've been digging uh, the last couple weeks? Ah, oh, geez. Uh, I don't, I don't have anything super extra cool. I've been doing a lot of what I've been doing, so you know, lots of go back of, to the uh, YouTube episode. Yeah, yeah, lot, lots of YouTube vi- watching, lots of YouTube playing, lots of Overwatch playing, lots of Minecraft. Uh, I've been working on putting the next D- Dungeons and Dragons campaign together using uh, Microsoft OneNote, which is the most amazing app ever for putting together those kind of complex notes, interlinking things and whatnot. Um, no, Can nothing, you describe what really. that is? Is that like a mind map kind of situation? No, I, I really like those mind node apps where you kind of like just drag a you mm-hmm. know kind of a tree of different things. But this is I don't know. It's pretty much like Microsoft Word, but you can embed. Well, I'm sure even Word can do that, but you can embed a whole bunch of different tables and images and links, and you can embed YouTube videos and all that. But it's really about how it kind of like organizes things. Where it's like on the left you have like books. 
and inside your books you can pretty much put like chapters and you click on a chapter and it opens up in the window and you have these tabs and every tab can get pages and every page can have sub pages and it's just it's organized on the proper number of levels where you're like your brain works at that number of levels where it's like oh here's mm. the big category here's the specific section i care about here's the topic I'm on, and then here's the details. And then in any one of, at any point, you can just search on any other one, or you can make a link from one page to another. So you can be like, oh, like here's, for me, it's D&D. So it's like, oh, this character. So I just put his name, but then I link to his page. So while I'm working on it, I can click directly in there, see the page, jump back to the previous one. I can put like YouTube videos for like me. Oh, music, like there's supposed to be applause at this point. So I can click a button that automatically plays a YouTube in the window of like applause sound and it, you know just little things like that where <laughs> I, I really crazy. love I really love what it does I don't think I'd use it for anything other than my Dungeons and Dragon notes but it works great but for that Micro Microsoft made the perfect Dungeons and Dragon yes notes. and it's, they probably have no idea that they did it <laughs> yep <laughs> that's funny um I'll uh I'll share give you guys some time uh I, PBS released a new show called Sound Breaking um my buddy Chad uh, who who always knows me so well? My other buddy Chad, not this Chad. Uh, <laughs> so many Chads. You, wow. you know me well too, Chad. Two Chads. But you didn't. Te you, but you didn't text me uh, on Tuesday last Tuesday telling me about Sound Breaking, which is an incredible, uh, basically music documentary, and they're breaking apart um, kind of different sections. And tonight's, which is Monday, is all about. It looks like hip hop, so it's about sampling and how sampling kind of changed. Um, uh, what music could do. Uh, the second episode was all about four tracks and multi-track recording. Uh, I think the third or fourth episode was all about vocals and capturing different types of vocals about singer songwriters. So if you're into music, I uh, highly, highly recommend uh, this sound breaking is incredible. Um, every episode's been awesome. In fact, let's see, one, two, three, I think they're on five or six, episode five or six. So um, check it out. I'm not sure where to watch this after the fact, but if you have PBS, which Many people do uh, on their antenna or, or uh, whatever you have at home. Go check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, I've, uh, I've really dug it. In fact, if you're looking the first one to start off with, check the four track one out. That was Tuesday, last Tuesday. That's cool. Uh, yeah, it's, it's. I'll have to check that one out. Amazing. I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought we were limited to like, like productive topics. If we were talking about that, I would say Westworld. <laughs> uh, now Chris wants to go back. No, no, no. Well, I've just been watching a lot of Westworld, which is amazing. But I won't oh, say yeah. any more mm -hmm. than Westworld it. is mm -hmm. pretty killer. Yeah. I hear yeah. good things as well. I haven't seen yesterday's yet. So yeah, no. I just watched it last night. Okay. Yep. I, I kind of no, go through no this spoilers. thing on Sundays where no I'm spoilers. like, I'm either going to watch, I don't, I'm too tired to either watch, I can't watch both, but Walking Dead and Westworld are on. Mm. And I have to make a conscious decision based on my mood which one it's going to be um, because you know if you're if you're a Walking Dead fan right now this season is extremely depressing not that well, hasn't, hasn't that been every yeah. hasn't but, it no, been every like episode more, since the first season yeah but this season people are walking away from it because it's so <laughs> it's so down anyway so uh, I I watched Westworld instead and it was it was a good episode but yeah All right, right in that so down. I guess for mine um those of you who follow me on Twitter, you know that I was trying to go all Wacom or Wacom. I guess Wacom is whack the correct They way say Wacom. Wacom. I tried to go all <laughs> Wacom for a week, and I made it through it one day. Uh, <laughs> and I couldn't. I couldn't do it. You gotta. And you gotta push through, man. I couldn't three, do I've it. Dude, I could days. not do it because here's why. I have a death grip that cannot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I literally am like tight fisted like this all the time and so by the end of the day my hand is like killing me and i said to myself i'm right this is stupid i'm just not a whack'em guy like that's i just came to the terms like okay i'm not that guy i want to be like that but i can't so i'm gonna be a, mo I'm a mouse guy i'm gonna embrace being a mouse guy and i said i'm gonna buy a better mouse and that's what I'm, that's what i did and i bought the um I'm going to put it up on camera here. For those of you just listening, I'm putting my new fancy mouse. Ooh, it's, it's the a uh, Razor Death mouse. Adder Elite. Couldn't have a more uh, ridiculously name, a ridiculous game gamer name. Elite. And if you notice here, it's changing colors. It's it's basically made it's made by Razer, and everything they do basically has to change colors, it feels like. And um, comes with a I Mountain do not Dew. have a problem and, and with ships that. with a, a case of Mountain Dew, code red. <laughs> And uh, I got to say, I'm not completely sold on the mouse, and here's why. I think it's extremely well-made, and it's, it's definitely 
Um, the parts are great. It's got a really long cable, so if you're one of those guys like me, like your computer's all the way over there and your mouse is here and you don't want to use a port for a mouse, it can reach. Um, that's a plus. The other plus is the sensitivity on the wheel. Great, mm -hmm. great sensitivity on the wheel. My problem is, is that it's really light and I feel like I am, I don't know, I'd like a little bit more girth in my mice. I can actually talk about this as well. You have the same Because one. I just got this mouse as well, uh, like maybe a month ago, maybe two months ago. Um, I came from the Naga. I really like mm, the Naga. Okay. But I, for me, it's the shape. Like, mm. I'm a shape guy. Are you a palm or a claw? I'm a, I'm a this. Well, uh, you're this? a palm. That's okay, palm. I'm a palm. I learned about that in my research. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're, um, if, you're, if you're a claw person, you go like this. You're like this with your mouse. If you're a palm person, you're like that. I see. Wait, how can you do the claw? If you have a big oh. hand. Oh, I guess. Well, you... it, pull, hold the mouse up and do it with the claw, because I don't even understand Would how you like that me works. To be your yeah, surface? You, so if I'm a, you gotta hold it this way. Oh yeah. So if I'm a claw person, I'm more like this. What? what? Who does, Who does that? that? That's my question People for the audience. Very does large anyone hands. do that? And then, like me, I'm like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that those are definitely two grip styles that I learned about, and I personally could never do claw. My hands are just not that big, but um, it. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm not sold on it. So what? I, my question to the audience is: Hit us up in the links, or sorry, in the comments, and let me know what my mouse I should try next because I'm really not sold on this. Or for those of you who think Go to you your should, Amazon mouse. Tr <laughs> the Amazon Basics mouse. Amazon Basics mouse. $2, I have, I have four bucks. of those in the house. Uh, for those of you who think Chad should uh, uh, try uh, whack them again. That's, <laughs> I would literally have, have to get injections of muscle relaxers in my arm to do a whack them. You know, I'd you be guys like, have been telling me it takes me. It's going to take me a week to get used to Windows one day. You know, you got to give it. That is you gotta true. got to give it the same thing. That's a, if you, I tell you what, this is what we'll do. Oh, wait, you're going to steal my question. Oh, what? Well, no. Okay. All I was going to say was, <laughs> if you go Windows, I'll go whack them. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And I'll tr I'll give it a solid try. I will. Okay. My arm is... will... I'll probably have to go to the doctor, but... <laughs> I'll, I will be there with you for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Mental reasons. Yeah, he'll, he'll yeah. be lying on a sofa. Oh, they'll be... Yeah. My <laughs> arms will be wrapped around. And I'll just be in a sling, like, with my arm. <laughs> what are you in for? <laughs> whack them. <laughs> whack him I hardly knew him <laughs> I got whack him arm uh, yeah. Trevor what have you been into and um, what's the what question you have for our audience sure so um, uh, the past I would I want to say like maybe week and a half I've been learning Python Ooh. I'm not I'm not a code guy at all uh, Python's don't, fun. Don't, yeah you are I'm not really not, yeah, you are. not really I mean L look at him he's a code guy I'm, I'm not a code guy this is well here's the literally thing though it's almost every code person says they're not because everybody knows how much more there is to know but you mm -hmm. probably already know like a hundred thousand times more than somebody who doesn't know anything this is so, true so everyone who's a lower level than you is going to be like what the hell are you talking about of course you're mm -hmm. a code guy look at what mm -hmm. he did mm -hmm. but here the 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 interesting thing to me is not or i guess it, it doesn't interest me because it's code I, I actually don't really get anything out of having to learn you know strings floats very you know all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. like and and syntax and all of that like that's i don't want to memorize a bunch of stuff but the things that i can get from mm -hmm. learning that is what excites me um for myself i'm looking to take a lot of the human error out of things like um you know file paths directories so automation basically. automation like that um you know actually c40 has gone a long way in um we were actually talking about this the other day the token system yep oh, um yeah. and uh take system you can automate kind of stuff with the take system and tokens render tokens mm -hmm. um and i think you had picked up the dropbox i uh mm -hmm. idea so uh, this was something we were talking about the other day was um you know uh Anytime you make a play blast or, you know, render to picture viewer, if you just put dollar sign PRJ, like it's going to take the name of your project and render that as the name. You can mm -hmm. also put date, time, blah, blah, blah. So basically, uh, every time you press shift R or render to picture viewer, it's going to render a different name. And you can have that just like always point to whatever folder. 
Yeah. Um, or, so you want to expand on that with Python? Is that the idea? Yeah. Um, and beyond that, so that uh, it's helped me learn um, Arnold's language as well, Kick. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I hear that Python is the easiest language to learn, like in, in that way. So, um, I've just been trying to open myself to that, uh, side of things. Um, and there are actually some websites that are pretty, pretty helpful for stuff like that. They have like little, uh, it's almost like going to school, but for free, there's a, I can't, I wish I could remember the name of the website. There's like a whole community for it and it, I've. Can't remember. Is it that? Is it Corsica, Chris? Is that? I don't think no? that's it. Cor Cors They're like Cors eighteen Cors lessons for like basic Python, oh. and they, it's really straightforward. And at the bottom of the thing, there's like it gives you a little test, and you got to type this the code out, and you know evaluate it and stuff like that. that. Sounds interesting. Yeah, it's like ah. super easy. I did it in. Uh, I did most of my learning. I did in an afternoon. Wow. Actually, um, so yeah. So what's your question? My question, well, when you guys said question, I didn't, I thought it was just a question. I didn't know it was actually related to the, the thing. Um, but so my question was actually going to be related to the Windows uh, OS X conversation. And that is, um, what would you miss the most leaving OS X for that's a, a different platform? For for Nick or for everybody? Everybody. That's okay. everybody. Well, or Nick. That's I want a good question. Answer it. I like it. Uh, would you like me to a answer that? Or should we let our audience answer that? I would, I, I would like both. Yeah, you, you, you prime them, <laughs> Nick. Goodness. Um, man, there is, there is a lot of little things that I would feel frustrated about. So to me, the, the overall thing that I would miss is, is my knowledge of it. Is, is my knowledge of being comfortable in my own world and knowing where to look for things. Um, I think anytime, anytime you do a project and you have to go like remember where you put all the tools and then this piece is different from here and then you forgot to charge the battery and then you got to go wait for that and then you, f you forget the drywall bit is different from the wood bit and like those kind of physical projects where I don't do them enough always frustrate me. I just had to do uh, some new stuff at, at my house. And those, it just reminds me of, of that kind of situation that I feel like I'm going to be in when I switch to Windows or if I switch to Windows, which is not really the one or two things that are, I'm really going to miss. It's going to be really the comfortableness of knowing where everything is and knowing what drawer to open at least to go find the, um, the headphone jack or whatever analogy I'm trying to get right now. Um, as I, as I open up and just open up cinema 40 or just do this one thing, I think I'll be okay. But that one day where I want to, um, like adjust the volume of this separately from this, or try to figure out how to network two computers together. The, the day uh, you set up a live stream. Yeah. Like the day I try to go do a live stream. <laughs> I'm going to be on with him all day. Uh -huh. Yeah. It'll be yeah. like three applications, microphones and lighting and yeah, so it's it's it is. I know that's kind of a cop out and kind of saying everything, but it it's really not one thing for me. It it that I'm too worried about. I think there's always going to be some sort of uh, analogous way of, you know, switching from ScreenFlow to Camtasia or, um, you know, learning how to turn up or down a volume switch or whatever it is. I get frustrated about it. I'm sure there's always an answer for it. And I and so for me, it's overall the the little thorns like that are what are going to add up to me that's going to make me wish for my osx blanket back i have a, I have a response to that um and that is for me uh you know i was i uh, feel very much that i was that way as well um when i went freelance and was like okay what am i going to do now with software and hardware and all mm. that kind of stuff and at first it did feel like that it felt like you know, I'm one step forward is like three steps back. But I mean, we're always, I mean, at least I feel like I'm always learning and I've uh, transitioned my viewpoint from uh, really like looking at it from a perspective of this is, this is harder and this is, you know, um, or I, I really miss this thing. And I, it turns into what is this tool doing now that I wasn't able to do before. And that actually gets me excited about learning more tools and kind of like 
fleshing out what I really want to use uh, on a day-to-day basis instead mm-hmm. of you know, looking at um, what I've been comfortable with and saying, and kind of just ignoring the other stuff um, because I was very much, and I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying that now having, you know, been in this environment for a little while, it is more work and it is more time investment, especially in the start. But at the end, I feel like, you know, you have a... It's opened up more doors. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that makes sense. I mean, I could see that. I mean, I think that's really the, the when you get to the 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 real issue of, of not knowing and and that not that unfamiliarity is is daunting at mm-hmm. first. But I think that's a temporary. I think it's a temporary feeling. It's a uh, it is temporary, and I think um, you know we have been we have um, a, we've had a lot of good people and a lot of good designers and developers that have made lots of. Uh, software that we're used to opening up and it, it works and you know you don't have to ask a lot of questions and that's actually a really cool and good thing and I think it uh, promotes growth in other applications and makes other applications and software and hardware rise you know up. rise up to that mm-hmm. um, but at the same time uh, you know um, there are people uh, I don't know how to get to what I'm saying um, yeah, just move on. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> get over it. I think the but I I, I, I feel like it's a you know um, overall just more you're more uh, open to questioning the things you do and why you do them and right, and, right. and the tools you're using yeah. and is this the best for me to be using and 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 just kind of it's all, I, feel, I think balances. it's like it's a lot like um you know uh, opening yourself up to like an analogy that I think of is like uh, rocks. Uh, in a river and you, you have mm-hmm. to get across that river and, and mm-hmm. you know, you're used to this one path, but there are a lot of different ways that you could take across that river. And it's all about being open to whichever one is going to give you the best mm-hmm. experience yeah. and the best results. Mm-hmm. And, um, unfortunately manufacturers, Apple has not really made an effort to make as many paths available mm-hmm. on their river mm-hmm. that other manufacturers have. And maybe that'll change. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and that, you know, that's not to say I don't use Apple products. I love Apple products, actually. I have an iPhone and I have... Is this uh, the backpedaling my, part of the... No, I'm not backpedaling <laughs> at all. I'm, like, exposing <laughs> that I don't hate... This mess with you. I know. I know. Um, He's saying he but, uses all the rocks. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I use it for what I feel like it's I'm most efficient at it right, with. Right, yeah, yeah. Which totally. is, like, email and just wasting time on the internet. And, you know, right. like, it, it's... When I'm done working and I want to sit down and not input uh and have to figure things out i'm gonna you know use my apple laptop because it's just a really nice experience Mm -hmm. um it's like you know sitting down with a nice glass of scotch or something uh but when i go to work you know i'm gonna just compare scotch to (laughs) sure okay but i mean you know there's a there's a time and place for it and that's what my time and place is and the and the and the pc with the neon is the mountain dew got it yeah. Well, I was yeah. going to say, there's, a, I, in, there's a time for Mountain in, Dew. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was going to say, for fine scotch. maybe it's more like the water um, <laughs> when you're, you know, working in the day. Mm, okay. Could be. Could right. be. I don't this know. is good. I wanted to thank you guys for being my uh, support through this. Um, <laughs> I feel really connected to you guys that you always support me through this big transition in through my this life. Difficult this, my, this difficult time. This difficult time. We'll be here for you, time. man. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, we should wrap up, though. Uh, thank you so much, Trevor, for stopping by today yeah. and uh, saying hi. And um, if you'd like to learn um, more about Trevor and see his amazing reel, by the way, which I just watched again, oh, thank uh, you. and check out his Star Wars uh, short, um, check out the show notes that are over at episode 11, I think, today. And um, as always, thank you, Chad and Chris, for joining us in today's podcast. Look for another one next week. Uh, we got to go get all these notes together. And if the podcast is just randomly super late, it's because I've been playing in X particles all <laughs> day and blame after it. Yeah. after learning uh, about these um, all that geometry stuff. So if you see a daily render that has like a bunch of lemons in it, <laughs> and then the podcast is late, you know what happened. So thanks again for coming by. As always, um, I will hope to hopefully. Uh, yeah, see, I'm so bad at ending ending these. <laughs> bye. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. <laughs> bye, everybody. Later. Have bye, a good bye. Have a good week. <laughs>